I have had to learn the power of saying no. I got to the point where I was just tired. I was done with the lies of the devil. I was done with feeling like I wasn't enough, not good enough, not qualified enough. I was tired of that. And so one day, as I was reading the Word of God, I realized the authority that God has given me, the power I have in His name, the power I have in His blood, the power I have through the Holy Spirit. You see, the day that I understood the power I have in Jesus, I began to say no. I began saying, no, I am no longer a slave to fear but I am indeed a child of God. I begin to say no. I will not be held captive to thoughts or feelings of inferiority. I am good enough because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I learned to say no. Devil, you can't come into my home. You can't take my family. And that's what I want you to understand. Learn to say no. Say no to the enemy. Learn to fight back when you feel your back is against the wall. Say, no, I won't give up. No, I won't be defeated because if God is for me, who can stand against me? It's important to know the power of saying no. Saying no can even help to relieve us of stress and so many other negative things. If anxiety knocks, if worry calls your name, Say no to it. Say no to your enemy. When the devil tries to come at you, you have the right to say, not in my home, devil. Not my life, devil. Not my marriage, devil. Not my children, devil. Refuse to let the enemy just walk all up into your life and wreak havoc. Say no in the name of Jesus. It's a small word, but it's powerful when you know how to use it. I love that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 3, verse 22, do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. Do you know what I get when I read this? I read that God is telling me to say no to being afraid, to say no to just fighting any battle. Why? Because the battle is not mine, but it's the Lord's. Romans 8, 37 says, And all these things, we are more than just conquerors through him who loved us. That says to me that I should say no to being defeated and discouraged. I should say no. I will not be overcome by challenges, by trials and tribulations. I will not be overcome by this attack from the devil. People of God, hear me. There is power in saying no. We have created a culture that emphasizes success, productivity, and hustle. And as a result, a lot of people are simply severely stressed out. And don't get me wrong, stress is an enemy an enemy to you whether you are saved or unsaved. Whether you believe in Christ or you're an atheist, stress is a common enemy to all of us. Here are some facts about stress from various sources. Work stress causes 10% of all strokes. Think about that. Three out of four doctor visits are for stress-related ailments. Stress is the primary cause of 60% of all human illness and disease. It increases the risk of heart disease by 40% and the risk of a heart attack by 25% and risk of a stroke by 50%. 40% of stressed people overeat or eat unhealthy choices, meaning that we are self-medicating our stress with food. 44% of people lose sleep each night because of stress, meaning that stress is causing a lack of sleep, which in turn is causing even more stress. 
And finally, studies have shown that stress literally reduces gray matter in your brain. In other words, it's shrinking your brain. So what's all this got to do with you as a Christian? What's it got to do with your relationship with God? Well, before I dive into that, let me take a step back and say that many of us we're stressed out and overworked because we don't know how to say no. We are bombarded with bosses, families, and friends that demand our time and energy. Some of these groups can be very difficult to say no to. But the tricky part is that all of them seek to make plausible demands. We need our jobs to make a living and provide for our families. Our families need our time and presence to form the bonds of trusting relationships, and it takes time and effort to build life-giving friendships. The problem is that there are only 24 hours in a day, and of those 24 hours, six to eight of those should be dedicated to sleep. This means that there is actually very little time that we have to fulfill all of the demands placed on us. Furthermore, with all those demands on our lives and time, we must ask the question, when do we have time for God? When do we have time to feed our faith, to feed our spirits? When can we find and set aside time for worship, prayer, and Bible study? Because if we're not doing these things as Christians, then perhaps we need to reevaluate our priorities and the things demanding our time. In other words, we must learn to say no. Saying no can literally be the word to save your life. Learning how to say no is primarily about defining priorities. You have to decide what things are worth a slot in your 24 hours of time each day. Most people have something like faith, family, fun. So is God really first in your life? We need to understand that as humans, each of us are limited resources. We can't give time to everyone, and that's a fact. So within our daily duties, our daily responsibilities, we need to find time to really put the Lord first. And I wanna emphasize the point of finding time because every day will come with new chances and opportunities to get bogged down. So we have to know when we are saying yes to the detriment of our faith or family or even our health. You don't need to say yes to every phone call that shows up on your screen. You don't have to say yes to watching every movie or to attend every event or function. You must have priorities, and at the top of that list is your relationship with God. We must pray for the spirit of discernment as to when to say, no, I can't do that. No, Sunday's not a good day to go there with you. No, I can't catch up today. You're saying no because you know you need to pray. You're saying no because you know you need to hear the word of God. You're saying no because you know you need to spend some time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Another aspect of saying no is saying no to temptation, saying no to the luring of the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Perhaps we could translate this verse to be, say no to the devil and he will flee. Temptation is not a sin. The sin comes in when we allow that temptation or thought to take root and grow in our mind and behavior. We don't have to fall for the devil's temptations or accept the evil circumstances he throws our way. We can declare in the name of Jesus that the devil has no power over us. We can rebuke the devil's whispers to try to lure us away from God. We can resist the devil's lies about who we are and who God is. When the devil tries to tell us we're worthless, we can respond, no, I am made in the image of God and Jesus Christ loved me enough to give his life for me. 
When the devil tries to tell us that God has abandoned us, we can say, no, Jesus said, I will be with you always, even until the end of time. When the devil tries to tell us we cannot overcome the alcohol or the drugs or pornography or whatever addiction, no, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have the power to say no to that old serpent called Satan and let him know that God's word has the last say in our lives and not his. Learn to say no to anything that takes you away from God, but learn always to say yes to Jesus.